Let's say you need to create a user identification process for your website. Users must complete a series of verification steps, and based on how confident you are that you know who the user is, they may have access to different features. As a first step, you may ask users to provide a name and date of birth, which is not verified. Then, later, you ask the user to verify their phone number. Later again, you ask the user for a second tier piece of identification, like a bank card or invoice. This may need to be manually verified. And then, as a final step, you ask the user for their license or passport, which also needs to be manually verified. A reasonable way to store this data could be to store the user data in a table called identification with the following columns. You could have a column for each verification data type and a neighboring column containing a boolean to indicate whether this has been verified or not. When someone starts phone verification, you could save their phone number. And when they verify it, you could set the phone number verified column to true. When querying, you can simply check all the boolean columns to see what the user is or isn't allowed to do. Let's say you use this configuration or a version of it for a few months, but there is an issue. Your phone provider announces that there has been an exploit where messages could be sent to the wrong phone number by starting phone verification with one number and then restarting it with a different one, allowing users to verify with a phone number they don't own. Or, due to compliance reasons, there is a new requirement where you need to flag any account that fails verification more than twice. You simply don't have the information required to solve these problems, and it was unreasonable to predict these kinds of requests in advance. A user identification process is a complex system, with many permutations in state and strict compliance requirements. So what if instead of storing only the latest data, you kept a record of everything that ever happened, so that you may have the data required to answer any unexpected questions that unavoidably come up? Let me show you how to organize this system a different way. Instead of writing directly to the identification table, you could create an events table with columns user ID version, event, and timestamp. Whenever a user takes any action, an event detailing everything that just happened is saved. Events are never mutated or deleted, only appended to the event store. For example, user registered event contains the user's initial details. A phone verification started event contains the phone number used to start phone verification. A phone verification finished event contains the phone number and whether the verification succeeded or not. A driver's license submitted event contains the information included in the document, and a driver's license manually verified event contains the name of whomever verified the license and the result. Using these events, you can recreate the original table we created in the first implementation, meaning our queries stay exactly the same. But now we also have a lossless history of everything that ever happened, we can find all users that have more than one phone verification started event with a verified phone number. And we can compare the phone number that they used to start verification with, with the one that they used to complete it. We can also build a new table that contains the number of failed identification methods for each user. When performing an action, you load all previous events for that user. Use them to create the state needed to make domain decisions and then save any new events. Since the same events will always give the same state, it makes testing domain logic very simple. Given these events have happened, when you take this action, then these new events should be created. And the domain logic itself is very simple, since you can create any in-memory data structure you want when loading the events and use it to make decisions. Event sourcing has two main advantages. The first one being that your data is essentially lossless. Since you are saving everything that ever happened, rather than whatever you know you need right now, you can answer future questions even for past data. This is good for systems where you're not sure what you need to store right now, or systems with strict compliance requirements. The second reason is that this makes domain logic very easy to write, validate, and debug. You can create any domain state using the events, meaning that tests are easy to write and bugs are easy to reproduce. But it comes with some strong disadvantages. All your commands save events, which are later processed to create the appropriate tables for querying. This means your queries won't always be up to date. This is called eventual consistency, and it is the biggest pain point when working with event source systems.
Sometimes you also realize you're missing data that you should have included in previous events. You can add it to new events, but events must remain backwards compatible if you want to use your old data to answer questions. That being said, event sourcing is a powerful pattern that can solve some very complex problems. For an example of how scalable saving what happened instead of what currently is can be, take a look at a very obscure developer tool named Git.